if you're dealing with too long, too short, or poorly made coax cables, or you need to run coax cable yourself and wondered if you can do it yourself, well, yes, you can. In this video, I'll show you how. It is going to be helpful to have a couple of tools, and they're not that expensive. Uh, the biggest one is going to be a crimping tool, and this one will actually allow you to crimp the connection ends so that uh, your connection is well made. The other tool is going to be the cutter. This one has a connection specifically for coax cables. Uh, however, uh, some folks uh, have successfully done that with just uh, a knife, uh, but it is recommended to have a specific tool because it is going to cut it right to spec, especially if you'll have several of those cables to do. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have a brand new RG6 coax cable and the new connection that we'll be putting on it. We'll start by making the appropriate cuts and stripping it in order to put the connection on it. Uh, if you do have this cutter or any uh, coax cutter, you'll notice that you need to make sure that you have the right blade set. In this case, we have set it to RG6 and RG59 because in this specification, it will actually has, it's going to be kind of hard to see on camera, but it already has two blades in it. So when we're making uh, the cuts, it's going to do the two cuts that are necessary all in one swoop. So uh, we'll go ahead and align it correctly. And it's always better to err on getting the extra copper to be too long because we can always trim it if we need to do that. So we'll do pass this way, and then we'll do pass back, and then we can actually pull that out. You'll see that when it cuts, if we release it, it makes two cuts. It makes the first cut here, which removes and exposes the copper wire here, and then the second cut at the end does the shielding. So if you're going to be doing this without this tool, that is what you're basically going for, is to make those two cuts. We will start pulling back on any of the shielding that we have. Sometimes you'll get a little more, sometimes you get a little less, but you do not want any of the shielding touching this copper wire because that is going to be causing you a lot of interference and issues with the signal. So when you're looking at it, and it's going to be hard to see on camera, but we definitely want to make sure that all of the shielding is peeled back. So once we pull back the shielding, we'll put the connection on it. But before we do, if you'll be doing connections outside and if the part of the cable is going to be outdoor, make sure you get connections that are outdoor rated. Uh, these ones came with uh, the crimping tool and then the cutter. They're not the greatest connections out there, uh, but they do work. Uh, the plastic sometimes will chip, I don't know, 10-15% of the time when I was trying it. Uh, but for my outdoor connections, I actually got some outdoor rated ones for sure. I wasn't sure what's going to come with the kit, but it does work. So uh, before I do put it on, the ending here that you'll see, kind of the plastic shielding that is shielding the copper, will need to be aligned flat with the inside uh, ring that you'll see right there. So as we're putting this on, you may need to give it some twisting and pushing, but you'll know you've done it right when Looking at this, it should be flat. It's close, but I can probably push it just a little bit more when doing so. And now it is flat. Hopefully, let's get to the camera. You can see it. Once it is flat and we have a little bit of it coming out, uh, a little bit of the uh, copper coming out, uh, about a quarter of an inch or so, that's good. If it is too much, no problem. All you have to do is take some uh, cutters, pliers, and just... Uh, cut it off to the appropriate specification, so that's not an issue. So once the inside shielding is flat with the inside ring, you'll see that you have a little bit of the copper coming out, about a quarter of an inch, that is sufficient. And now we can go ahead and crimp the connection. So in this crimping tool, you'll see that this connection will go inside into the hole of the crimping tool right there, and it is, the whole connector is being held by the two studs to the left and to the right, right behind the blue plastic there. And then we'll go ahead and crimp it. Hopefully it's going to crimp well. Once in a while it does not. Those cheap plastic ones are sometimes not holding up, but now it is. I give it, you know, two tries at least, just to make sure it is all connected well. 
and we're done. Now we have a good, well crimped connection ready for usage. Well, that was fairly painless, quick, and easy, wasn't it? Now you can do the same thing on your end. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, this video was helpful to you. If you can, please like and subscribe.